Hello, my name's Mark with GCO Tutor, and I'm here today with Practical Machinist to talk about some tips for handwriting a turning program when we're programming a G code part on a CNC lathe. Okay, so my first tip is make your programs easy to read. And by this, I mean setting out the layout properly and having operator's notes throughout the code. So when another operator or programmer picks up from you, they can easily read your program. So we're not in the game here to trick other operators to prove how good we are at programming and make everyone else feel bad because they can't understand our program. The signs of a good programmer is writing a program that's clear and easy to understand for any level of G-code programmer to follow up and clearly see what's going on within that program. So keep your code nice and clear. Don't mix incremental and absolute too much unless it's absolutely necessary. And if you do, why not just add an operator's note in that program just to make it clear that we are switching from one to the other. And the same with Cartesian and polar coordinates. It looks very impressive switching between the two all the way through the program, but it does get extremely hard to follow for another operator. So try to keep your Cartesian coordinates separate from your polar coordinates. We do often have to switch between one to the other. So when we do, why not add a clear operator's note in the program? So the following G-code programmer understands exactly what's going on without overlooking that G-code that switches between the two. Tip number two. So when we are writing with macros and variables, Try to keep your variables down to a minimum. Don't use them unless they're absolutely necessary because they only add to confusion. And when we set a variable, add an operator's note in brackets after the variable what we are setting and what that variable is for. If we just have random variables throughout the program, it's almost impossible for another operator to know what those variables are without spending a lot of time decoding that program. So if we clearly mark our variables and use them only when necessary, it makes it much easier for the next programmer to follow up on that machine and continue working from your part. Tip number three, use boilerplate code. So boilerplate code is a selection of code that's pre-written for different operations that we need every day for our part. For example, we can have a boilerplate code for a center drill. Then instead of writing out the center drill code, each time we use a center drill, we just copy and paste that into our program and make a few edits on the Z depths and we're done. So by having sections of program pre-written saved in your machine, we can call upon them at any time and just do a few edits and it's ready to go. So this really speeds up our G-code programming and you will be able to program G-code faster than a CAD CAM operator will be able to do the same program. Tip number four, use the right cycle for the right job. If we are only turning a small spigot on the end of a piece of bar, instead of using G71 to rough that away in the Z axis, why not use G72 and rough it away in the X axis? We'll be taking a lot larger cuts and it'd be a lot quicker, better surface finish, and possibly more accurate depending on the type of material and how far it is from the spindle. So use the correct cycle for the material removal that we need. So if we're using drilling cycles perhaps, and we're doing countersinks, we would use a G82 drilling cycle so we can add a dwell at the bottom to clean up that finish. So always make sure you're using the correct cycle for the correct job. So tip number five, we've written our program and now we need to test it. Now any computer scientist will tell you that a program that is correct from the start is almost impossible to do. You would never see a manager in a programming shop such as a JavaScript or web development area that expects zero bugs. Bugs in programming is a part of life. So do not assume your program is bug free. They might be decimal points in there you've missed. We're not perfect when it comes to programming and bugs are to be expected. So when you run your program, make sure you have it on single block the feed rate right down low, the rapid speed right down low. We've got our finger on that feed hold. Continuously watching the screen so we know where that tool is going to be next and run it through extremely slowly. And don't let anyone rush you at that stage. If you had a foreman on your back saying, get this job done. At this point, when you do your tape tryout, relax, take your time. This is the most important part. And this is where you're going to crash the machine if there is a problem. But if you run through the program slowly, 
with single block and all your feed rates right down, you can see those problems before they happen. And almost 99.9% .9 of the time, we can see those errors before they happen. So this part of the process is extremely important that you take a deep breath and be very careful and slowly as you run your program for the first time. Now my final tip, tip number six, is that when we come to run the machine, keep the door closed. This is about safety. And I've been running machines for 28 years and I've not once run a machine with the door open. So if someone tells you you're being a worse because you're keeping the door closed or it's gonna slow down production or whatever excuse I've heard managers and foremen tell me and try to force me to run that machine with the door open, they arrive in your factory as a new machine with interlocks on those doors so you can't open them. And machines can be run with the doors closed. Everyone does it. So always keep that door closed when you're running your machine because one, we don't want a face for the coolant and two, we don't want a face for the spindle. Okay, so that's my six tips for programming G-code by hand on a CNC lathe. Now, if you want to know more about programming G-code, pop over to my website at gcodetutor.com where I have a bunch of free articles and loads of courses where you can learn more about programming G-code, machine shop mathematics, your measuring equipment, and also CAD CAM. So I have a range of courses, both paid and free, over on my website, gcodetutor.com. I'll see you there.